Stats from the World Silver Survey are out today, and they found that world silver supply continues to be in a deficit as production stalls and industrial demand rises. So what can we expect from silver prices? Joining me today is Johan Wiebe. He's the lead metals analyst at Thomson Reuters and really one of the uh, people responsible behind the survey launched today. Uh, Johan, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me, Daniel. So this is interesting. It's the fifth year in a row that silver is recording a deficit. Yes. Yet silver prices still below $20 here, trading around 16 today as we speak. Why isn't the price higher? Yeah, there's a bit of a precarious relationship between a market deficit or a surplus in the precious metals industry and the relationship to the price. So uh, I think we touched about this uh, a while back as well. It's quite a strong relation between not so much a deficit supports higher prices and a surplus, the reverse, but it's also the fact that you have a lot of above ground stock, which is quite liquid material in terms of bars and coins that is available mm -hmm. to feed the market as and when, for example, a, a deficit occurs, as, as is the case right now. So that not necessarily means that a deficit then automatically relates into to higher prices. And if you look at the size of the deficit, we're talking about maybe 3% of the total physical market. It's not that big enough uh, to make like a significant impact on the so price. So nowhere near peak silver. I don't think so, no. I mean, we're, we're bullish if you'd want to talk about the forecast for prices um, this year. I think that there's still some, some arguments to be set for, for an uptick in silver demand, maybe um, eventually pushing prices to around $18 and some change an ounce. Um, but peak silver, no. I mean, the heydays where silver was uh, considerably higher, I yeah. don't see them happening um, anytime soon, unfortunately. Wow. So anytime soon. So you, is that like a five-year horizon, 10-year horizon? Can we ever get to those double digits? again? Yeah, that's a good question. And we, ca we get that quite a lot, of course. And it depends on a lot of variables here. I mean, what needs to be said is that there's, the silver market has various components that influence it considerably. I mean, fabrication takes up about 60% uh, of demand, the industrial side. Then you have a bit of jewelry. And then there's, of course, the, uh, the investment element of around 15%. And um, for prices to, to rally again to levels that we've mm -hmm. seen in the heydays, we need that investment sentiment to be in such a mood that they're willing to absorb significant amount of more metal coming onto the market and pushing prices up. And uh, that needs to some kind of a um, bull case for prices right. and a bear case for the economic sentiment. So when we hear these silver CEOs come out with very bullish calls, I've heard as high as $138 silver, wow. are they just talking their book? I mean, to a certain extent, um, everybody has a certain interest in the market making statements, and maybe there is a little bit of that taking place. Um, it depends what kind of variables mm -hmm. you take in consideration, but we don't see them happening anytime soon. All right, Johan, silver uh, <coughs> demand coming a lot from solar panels. Yes. Right? Yes. What's interesting here is that the industrial component is really driving silver prices. Do you think we'll see a switch back into retail anytime soon? Retail demand coming back? Yeah, so retail demand is still a significant part of the market, as mentioned, 15%. We still saw 151 million ounces of extra mm -hmm. demand coming from bars and coins. Yes, considerably less than last year, 27%, but still there are some investors absorbing the metal. But really the, the market last year was characterized by two phases. You had, unfortunately, the downturn in the retail investment side, but you had a strong, strong demand for industrial and particularly driven by solar. And also to a certain extent, I would like to highlight the electric and electrical components industry, which is driven by automotive. Right. So this will be more of a trend, you think? Absolutely. Trend? So on the solar side, we definitely see continued strong demand going forward. Yeah. Obviously driven by China, there is going to be a major, major push to energy diversification in a portfolio away from coal, because yep. we still burn a lot of coal, right, towards solar and the new, uh, this, this re-evaluation um, of the yep. portfolio, solar is going to play a big role in it. Let's talk the gold-silver ratio, currently at above 80 right now. Some analysts are recommending a uh, short gold buy silver trade here. I know you can't give recommendations, but what do you make of this thought process? I can see where they're coming from. I mean, I also looked at this ratio. I think I have a chart. I'll have put it up in the presentations I'm going to be having over a 50-year period. The average for us was 55. Now we're at 82. And if you look at the history, every time we're around 80-ish, you see the silver ratio eventually coming, coming down. You could say if 55 is the average mm -hmm. and you're at 80, you need to pay 82 ounces of right. silver to have one ounce of gold. It's Silver is cheap or gold is expensive. So, yeah, I, I can understand that type of reasoning. Finally, you need to ask you about Bitcoin. Last year, we saw how uh, the crypto took some thunder away here from the gold and silver space. With prices coming down for Bitcoin, could we see that money flowing back to silver? 
Yes, that's a good question. I mean, the, the cryptocurrency space definitely has taken away some of the interest and of the aversion of the interest from investors, from gold and silver traditionally. But at the same time, it's a total different market and the risk profile is completely different. We might have seen some uh, capital being allocated to that market indeed. And now with the volatility that investors see, it doesn't go only up. We might see some money thrown back to the market. But the main case, the main bull market or the main uh, strong market for for silver and gold is really in the uh, macroeconomic environment and not so much in the crypto cryptocurrency space. All right, Johan Riebe, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. And thank you for watching. We'll be back tomorrow.